Okay, let's talk bond formation. You've probably seen this chart before tracking the energy level as something goes from a non-bonded state with two separate atoms to a bonded state where they're now bound together. And uh, we'll go through a few steps of that and then discuss why that happens. The first thing to realize is that you have this energy level, which is known as the activation energy, and that's the energy required for these two atoms to reach their transition state, where they're not yet bonded, but they're not completely unbonded. And that allows them to reach an energy threshold where then they can release a lot of energy by bonding. Usually, as you may recognize, these are exothermic reactions moving forward. And that's because spontaneous bonds are usually going to be exothermic. This energy here could be Gibbs free energy, it could be heat, or it could be listed as just energy. But usually what you're going to see is them reaching a transition state and then releasing a lot of energy there. Now, be aware that the transition state and intermediate are two different things. A transition state is a phase between not bonding and bonding that allows the bond to occur. Whereas an intermediate is a product that is made and then used up in the middle of a multi-step reaction. And so don't get confused by those two terms. Transition state is a high energy state right before a bond happens. Intermediate is just a temporary product that's made in the middle of a multi-step reaction. Another thing you'll realize is that moving forward, you have an activation energy that is lower here, but it leads to this transition state much as this one backwards has a high activation energy but still leads to the transition state. So moving either forward into a bonding arrangement or moving in reverse away from a bonding arrangement both require you to reach a transition state and both require an activation energy. Now the reason that this happens is because if you can imagine having two atoms here, notice what electrostatic interactions are going to happen first. What's going to happen first is that these outer layer electrons will repel each other because they are so close to each other and according to Coulomb's law, that means there are going to be large repulsive forces. And so what that means is that there's going to be a lot of electronic repulsion to be overcome because these electrons and these electrons over here aren't great at getting along with each other. And so that is what needs to be overcome. There's a lot of desire for these electrons to push each other apart but in order for you to get into a bonding arrangement where now these two atoms are attached, you need to use some energy to overcome that initial repulsion. Another thing happens that we'll be covering more in a minute or two, and that is that you see the old rules of orbital for formation fall apart. Because orbitals are just the clouds that are most likely for electrons to fall into due to just normal electrostatic forces. Once you impose additional stress by bringing in new electrons from outside, the old rules of orbitals no longer apply. And what happens then is that your clouds stop looking like the typical clouds that you expect. And this is when hybridization occurs. Hybridization occurs when the orbitals stop looking like S and P orbitals and so on, but instead start to embody a shape that represents some S character and some P character. And so we'll go through some rules for assessing problems when you encounter any type of problem that involves orbital clouds and orbital formation. But here we'll just go through a quick example with car carbon. Normally, because of Hund's rules, the carbon has two electrons in the 2s and then one electron each in two of these 2p orbitals. But as they approach, some of these electrons, because uh, let's just say that we're looking at the electrons of carbon over here, some of those electrons, because they're now facing additional repulsive forces, are going to get excited. And what they're going to do is rather than these two staying in the same orbital, they're going to start to sort of form their own orbitals that are partly s and partly p. And so what happens is these four electrons now form four orbitals and these orbitals are all going to be sp3 orbitals. So there are going to be four of these and these are no longer purely s orbitals or purely p orbitals but instead they embody the character 
of both. And so this is when you start to see orbital hybridization. It's what happens when an atom that was normally just at peace and resting, and so it had your typical S, P, D orbitals. Now what's going to happen is that this atom instead will be approaching a bonding situation. And because of the electrons from its neighbor, it will no longer obey the typical rules of orbitals and instead the orbitals will start to blend together and these S and P clouds might start to mix with each other and form hybrid orbitals. And so we'll go through some rules for assessing those problems now.